So we have successfully made a deep neural network where we can change the number of hidden layers. So I can make this now, let's say 48, 24, 8, 4. So I can change the number of hidden layers and then train it again. And, and we did this completely from scratch without using TensorFlow or any built-in library, just Python and NumPy. And we also have a small little progress bar of our own, which shows the progress of the train model. What's going on everyone? In this video, we are going to create an L layer neural network completely from scratch without using TensorFlow or Keras, just pure Python and NumPy code. This video is for those enthusiasts like me who love to know the under the hood details behind everything. If you want to create a neural network completely from scratch where you can change the number of hidden layers uh, or dynamically on the fly, then this video is for you. And I can bet if you have watched my playlist on neural network and if you follow this video, then this code that we are going to write today will be the simplest explanation that you would have seen for neural network from scratch. And uh, because the code that I've written is very consistent to what I have taught in my playlist. If you have not watched that video, it won't be a lot of issue, but you should at least know all the equations behind neural network. Also, you can uh, side by side implement the same code that I write on your side as well. Uh, I will also link down in the description box the link to this uh, GitHub repo where I've created this assignment for you and you will also find my complete solution here or as well as the data sets that uh, data set that I'm using for this video. Uh, so you can you can open this link and you can go to the assignment section. And uh, there I've provided some blanks for you to implement. So you you can write that same code right alongside with me as well. Also, there is a tester block that I've written that uh, now this tester block will test if the implementation that we have written is correct or not. Now, if the actual value that it prints uh, is equal to the expected value, then most probably our implementation or your implementation will be correct. So, uh, so these tester blocks will help us uh, to detect if there are any errors, write that there and that only instead of directly finding that error at the end. And it took me many, many days of effort to make this code very simple and also to test this code on multi different data sets and also with a different number of layers. So it was a lot of effort that I had to put in just to create this video and I created this video just for you. And there aren't many resources out there online which explains this. So if you so if you are watching this video, then do hit the red subscribe button. Also hit the like button to support this channel. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. So let's not wait for that and let's get started with this video. So what are we creating today? Our end goal will be to create this model where we will be also where we will be also creating these functions. Now, uh, this is pretty straightforward. So this will be the entire model where first we will be initializing the parameters in our model. Then we will be writing the function for forward propagation, then cost function, then uh, we will write the function for backward propagation, then update the parameters based on the backward propagation equations. And that's it. And we will run these four uh, functions or we will call these four functions in a for loop and we will call them for iteration number of times. Now all these functions will be written in such a way that we will be able to modify the number of uh, hidden layers uh, just uh, as a parameter. Just as We will just specify the number of hidden layers and the number of units in the hidden layers in this uh, as an input to this main model and this input will be passed to the rest functions or all these functions and all these functions will be and the logic behind all these functions will be in such a way that uh, the equations will work even if we change the number of hidden layers. Okay, so sounds good, doesn't it? Now let's let's take a brief look at the data set. I have used a cat's data set. Now this data set that I've used and I've also provided its link uh, in that GitHub repo. So this is a uh, this is a binary classification data set, which means that the output categories are two, and and the categories are cat versus not cat. Uh, in some pictures, there are 
cats and in the other pictures there are no cats so that's what we are classifying if there is a cat present in the picture or not i took this data set from Andrewing's deep learning coursera course and we can visualize this data set for example uh, this is a picture of a cat and if i run this cell again uh, it is a picture of a not cat and this is again a picture of a cat so that's how our data set is so what I've skipped, uh, so I've already imported some libraries that we require. I have already uh, imported our data set and I've already implemented the activation functions. So if you have watched my previous video where I created a neural network from scratch with only one single hidden layer where you were, uh, where the number of hidden layers were fixed, then I had already written all these functions, activation functions, and I had showed how to, how all this work in that video. Then in that video, I have already written these activation functions and I have had explained it before. So if you, you can also watch that video if you haven't already. I will link down the entire neural network playlist and that video down in the description box or you can also find it by clicking on the upper eye button. So I'm skipping this just to save some time because the main motive of this video is to write the code where we can change the number of hidden layers. Right, so I'm focusing my energy on that. So let's focus our energy on that on this for this video. Okay, so what we have to do, we have to create uh, what we have to create initialize parameter function, forward propagation, backward propagation, update parameters, and cost function. Okay, so let's start writing the our first function, which is initialize parameters. Now this function initialize the parameters w and b, which are our weights and biases. Now you must know that uh, weights w are initialized with random values and the biases are initialized with zeros. Now let's do a quick recap of the equations that we saw in the neural network to understand how we are going to write uh, the code logic for this function. So just to simplify things, we are going to take consider an example of three layered neural network and from three layered neural network, I mean, I'm not considering the input layer. So whenever I use L layer neural network, which means that those are L layers and I'm not considering the input layer in it. Okay, so if we consider this as an example, then our uh, what's the shape what will be the shape of w and w and b right so the shape of w uh, will be equal to the number of neurons in the next layer comma the number of neurons in the previous layer so for example if you see the shape of w2 it's equal to n2 comma n1 so number of neurons in the next layer and number of neurons in the previous layer and what's the shape of b2 the shape of b2 is n2 comma 1 which means that the number of neurons in the next layer or in that layer a comma 1 Okay, so if you want to initialize W's and B's, initialize in W's and B's, then all we require are these number of neurons of that layer, right? Of every layer, actually. Okay, so uh, if I say that if I want to, in that, then I can say that for any Lth layer, the W will be equal to np dot random dot random n l comma n l minus one. So the input arguments or input parameters for this function are just going to be the layer dimensions i'm going to call it layer dims so layer dims will be equal to a list with number of neurons in every layer so for input layer uh, that will be x shape uh, comma 1 and I can specify the number of uh, neurons in the uh, uh, other layers. For example, the first header layer, I can specify 100. Next layer, I can specify 200. And the last layer, and in the last layer, the number of neurons are going to be equal to the number of categories that we have. Then if this is our input to the function, then we can initialize W1 as the shape of 100 comma x shape 1 and the w2 will be of shape 200 comma 100 and the w3 will be of shape y shape 0 uh, comma 200 right so for that we can just run a for loop and i want to run a for loop for how many times i want to run a for loop for l times and now l will be the number of layers that we have which is going to be the the length of this uh, l dims minus 1 as i said i'm not considering input layer as the size of the our model in in this code for writing this code okay so i can write for l in range starts from one 
to L plus 1. Now, why am I writing L plus 1? Because if I print L, see, I'm going to just comment this. And uh, call initialize parameters by specifying just let's say for now I'm just specifying random values. And then it will print in run two three, and that's what we want. We want w one, w two, w three, as you saw in the diagram. So I can uh, and where are where am I gonna store the parameters? Now you know that as now as this. Now, as in this, we can modify the number of layers. So the number of layers are not fixed, which means that this model can have multiple hidden layers. So how am I going to store all the W's and V's, right? So for that, I'm going to create a dictionary and I will name this dictionary as parameters. And I will store all the parameters. I will store all the weights and biases in this parameters dictionary. I can just specify that w plus string of l will be equal to np dot random dot rand n and i can specify that i want layer dims l comma layer dims l minus one and i can return parameters so what 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 is it gonna do so let's let's check it out what it's going to do is that it's going to store w1, w2, w3 in this parameters dictionary and we will be able to access those weights with the help of this parameters dictionary. So if I call this and, and if I store this into a variable, let's say p, then we can see how p looks like. Sorry, it was layer dims, not layer stem. And here we go. So we have w1 and we will have uh, w2 and similarly w3 so this is just create this is just converting the this numbers 1 2 3 in a string and it is just adding that number to w here okay so i think it should be clear and similarly we are going to do the same for b now what's the shape of b uh, now what's uh, how should we initialize the uh, b it will be np dot zeros and the shape is going to be just layer dims l comma one that's all now that's it that's all we require to do and if we pass different number of hidden layers uh, here it's going to take that as input and in this for loop we are going to have uh, uh, that many number of parameters and we are going to have that many number of weights and biases it's pretty simple I hope it's pretty simple. Also, uh, as I as you know, also you should know that when we initialize this with random values, we want don't want this numbers to be uh, this big, right? Like uh, one, uh, we don't want it to be like ab above one. So we want these weights to be small because it's uh, if if the value of these weights are large, then it creates a vanishing gradient problem. You can search about the vanishing gradient problem, and I have also talked about this problem uh, in my previous video as well so you can also check that out so we want this number to be small so what we are what we are going to do is that we are just going to divide it with the square root of the number of neurons in that layer okay for example if there are 100 neurons in the lth layer small lth layer then we are going to divide divide this weights with that many number of neurons so for example w1 will be divided with the square root of 10 w2 will be divided with square root of 100 w3 will be divided with square root of 200 so this is a standard uh, standard thing that is followed for writing uh, the l layered neural network so if we, there are multiple hidden layers then the in the parameters are initialized this way because we want to uh, initialize the parameters with the small values to avoid any vanishing gradient problem and that's it we are done with this function and uh, we are gonna just leave this as it is we are gonna uh, I'm gonna remove this and uh, we are gonna check if uh, we are gonna check this if we are if this implementation is correct or not by running this tester block so this is a tester block which uh, tells that the expected value should be like this and the expected value is as expected so we have not made any error so far so far we are good with this function great
So great work with initializing parameters. We have to do the same for forward propagation. Now again, let's do a quick re recap, not repack, recap of forward propagation. So for this model example that we took, the equations for forward propagation will be given by this. I had already explained that in my neural network playlist. So Z1 will be equal to W1 multiplied by A of previous layer. So A0 here is X, which is the input data set plus B1 and A1 will be equal to F of Z1 where F here can be an activation function which can be ReLU or 10H. Similarly, Z2 is W2 multiplied by A of previous layer which is the, this A1 plus B2 and similarly A2 will be equal to F of Z2. So if you see that this clearly follows a pattern and the pattern here is that the Z of any Lth layer will be given by W of that layer multiplied by A of previous layer plus B of Lth layer and AL will be equal to just F of ZL where F is any activation function. The, uh, and this is this can be repeated for all the layers. The only thing that is different is the Z and A for the last layer. For the last layer, the activation function should be sigmoid or softmax. Sigmoid if we are you doing binary classification, softmax if we are doing multi-class classification. So what should be the input parameter for this function? Now see what it is taking. It takes uh, W's and B's which will come from this parameters dictionary that we have uh, returned from this function, right? What else does it take? It also expect the input data set X as A0, right? So those two things are required. And another thing that it requires is that the activation function, which activation function do we want to use? Do we want to use a ReLU or 10H function? So these three input parameters are required. So I'll pass input X parameters and activation. By default, I will take a ReLU activation function. You might be thinking that we might also require to specify if we are going to use so a sigmoid or softmax function. But we can find it out from this A capital L. A capital L here are the predictions. So if the number of neurons are greater than one, then it will mean that it is a multi-class classification. If the number of neuron is equal to one for AL, then it will mean that it's a binary classification. So we are going to just use that information to use sigmoid or softmax function and it will actually be even helpful for us because we won't have to specify sigmoid or softmax the moment we change the input data set all right and then another question is that where are we going to store these z's and a's similarly what we did for initialized parameters we stored them in the dictionary we are going to store the z's and a's again in a dictionary i will name this as forward cache forward cache dictionary and i will store all the z's and is for every layer in that dictionary. The first thing that I'm going to store here is the uh, forward cache A0 because A0 might, we might require this A0 in the future. So I will specify A0 as X. And what do we want to do? We want to do, we want to run a for loop from, we want to run a for loop from 1 to L minus 1. And for the last capital L, we just want to write these equations separately. Okay, pretty simple task, run a for loop for L in range one to L minus one. So we want to go till L minus one. So it will be one comma L. If you, if you want to see this as an example, then I can write, let's say L is equal to four. Then we want to go from one to three. So we want one, two, three to be printed. All right. So if one comma four prints one, two, three, so one comma L will print one to L minus one. What do we require? We require forward cache Z of that layer. And what's the equation for that layer? W of that layer, A of previous layer and B of that layer. Okay. It's pretty simple. Just we use parameters W of that layer. And we want to do a matrix multiplication. So this star is actually not a dot product. This is a matrix multiplication. So this dot specifies that we want to do a matrix multiplication of W with A of the previous layer. Now for the first time, it will be using A0 and that's why I've created this A0 right here and uh, specified that as an input. So I will just specify forward cache A of previous layer plus parameters, you can't see this, 
B of that layer. And this way we will get our Z. Similarly to get our A, we will store that A in forward cache will be equal to the activation function that we use. So if I'm using a ReLU, then it will be ReLU of forward cache of Z. So this will run for 1 to L minus 1 and this will be repeated in a for loop and for the last layer we just want to use and for last layer we just want to use sigmoid I will just copy paste this outside the for loop and change this small l to capital L and relu to sigmoid all right that's it our forward propagation is done the only thing that we have to add is this activation and sigmoid softmax logic right so this looks exactly as what we saw here all right i will just uh, quickly write the logic for that and uh, and the logic is if activation is equal equals relu then use relu else use the same thing with 10 inch similarly here i will say if if the shape of the last zl because the shape of zl and el is going to be same so i will say is i will ask that if its shape of zero is equal equal to one then it will mean that there's only one neuron in the output layer and for that use sigmoid otherwise use softmax and finally i will return forward cache Oh, oh, oh uh, so this should be good uh, okay wait but we have not specified l here so can you tell me the logic of l what how can we get the l we can get the l from parameters so if the, we can just calculate the length of this parameters dictionary and divide that with two right now there is uh there is this divide divide symbol in python which means that this will return an integer instead of a float all right so for example if i write 4 divided by 2 then it will return 2 as an integer if i write 5 divided by 2 then also it will return 2 as an integer so this divide divide operation returns only the integral value of the divide operation okay and that's how we will get the total number of layers in our neural network and why divide by 2 it's because in parameters we have w and b right so w and b for all the layers so divide by 2 and this should be it and let's call our tested function and hopefully everything is correct and the shapes are as expected so we are good so this is the implementation of forward propagation do you see how simple it is uh i followed other resources online and they were not this simple i have tried to make this video as simple as possible i've tried to write this code as simple as possible so that you can understand and it's just that if you just know the equations of the neural network then you will be able to write the code for that in python yourself so our forward propagation is done let's implement our cost function so these are the two equations that you must already know for cost function so for binary class classification the cost function is given by this equation and for multi-class classification the cost function is given by this equation all right so let's just uh let's just implement them uh what what input does this cost function require uh, this cost function depends on the actual label y and the predictions al right so i will just say that cost function depends on a l and y and I it also requires m which are the total number of observations so i can get m is with with the help of the y shape and specifying one so this m is basically the shape of y if you see it's equal to 1 comma 209 so 209 is the number of observations while one uh, is a label is the actual label either zero or one all right, then I can say if y dot shape of zero is equal equals one, which means that if there is only one neuron and which means that there is only one neuron, it means that it's a binary classification. And if it's a binary classification, use this cost function. So I will just say that cost in that case will be equal to minus of one by M multiplied by NP dot sum 
of y and uh, this is a element wise multiplication log of a of l plus 1 minus y multiplied by log of 1 minus of a of l super, super simple if it's a multi class classification then the cost will be equal to minus of 1 by m multiplied by there are two sums right so this sum is a column wise sum this sum is a row wise sum so two sums i will just write again np dot sum np dot sum will return the sum of both columns and rows so both the sums are inside this one sum so both these summations are inside this one single np dot sum and here we will just need to write y multiplied by np dot log of a of l and that's it all right uh, i will also write cost equals to np dot squeeze cost now why do we write this now np dot squeeze just squeezes the shape and now i will show an example for example if i return uh, zero with two square brackets which means that I'm, I'm passing a list inside a list and then one single element then it just returns a single element all right so if multiple lists that is returning i just want to make sure that it returns a single value our cost is done now it's time for the the most difficult function if you can do this you can do the entire neural network and that's our backward propagation again let's do a quick recap of the back propagation so these are the equations for the back propagation now again we have to look for a pattern here what is something that we can use inside a for loop so that we can repeat it for every layer i think the pattern for dw and db is pretty clear if you observe this carefully dw of any layer let's say lth layer is equal to 1 by m of dz of that layer and a of previous layer if i take an example of dw2 then it will be equal to 1 by m matrix multiplication of dz2 with a1 transpose so for lth layer dz of the same layer and a of previous layer similarly db is just summation of dz of that layer all right now we have to look at the pattern for dz's actually there is a pattern for dz2 and dz1 if you observe this carefully dz of any layer l is equal to the matrix multiplication of w and dz of the next layer and then the element wise multiplication of derivative of activation function of z for that layer so i can say that i can repeat dz for all the layers except the last layer because for the last layer the dz capital L is just going to be AL minus of Y, whether it's a sigmoid or softmax is just going to be this one. While for the other layers, I can say that the dz L is equal to uh, matrix multiplication of WL plus one transpose with dz L plus one and then element wise multiplication of derivative of uh, activation function of Z of L. I hope this is clear. All right, so let's write that in our code. What parameters do we expect? So what parameters do we expect? we require al we require y which is our actual labels we require zl that means we will require our forward cache dictionary we also require w's which means that we will require our parameters dictionary and we will require which activation function we have used right so that's all we require uh, let's just take them as parameters ely forward cache ely parameters now now uh, again we will take a dictionary to store these gradients uh, d w's and db but we also require this dz right so we'll store dz as well so i will take grads as a dictionary for gradients i will get the number of parameters from the parameters dictionary just we did last time divide by 2 and i will take m from y dot shape of 1 then gradient of the z of any lth layer will be equal to just al minus y gradient the w of the last layer capital l will be equal to 1 by m matrix multiplication which is np dot of this grade gradient with 
a transpose of previous layer, which is L minus one. So I can get that from forward cache and transpose of this. Similarly, DB derivative of pi S B of L is NP dot sum of DZL and we specify the axis as one, which means column wise summation and keep dims equals true. So I'm going to switch off my camera for a while because I observe a slight lag in it. Now repeat these equations inside a for loop for the rest of the layers. What we want to do here is that we want to go reverse from L minus one till one, like L minus one, L minus two, till one that's how we want to go so so in the for loop for that i'm gonna pass a reversed range from one to l so this will go from this, this will start from l minus one l minus two it will go till one and then i'm gonna say the gradient of dz uh, let me just copy paste this gradient of z of small l will be equal to matrix multiplication and p dot of w of next layer transpose and uh, and dz which is the gradient of dz of next layer plus one and then uh, element wise multiplication of derivative of activation activation function so that's a derivative of relu here i have here i have defined the derivative of relu and derivative of 10h so i'm just going to use them derivative of relu and i pass forward cache a of string of l here why am i passing a of l because this derivative relu and derivative 10h function are expecting the derivative of x so it's taking the uh, so it's calculating the derivative of x which is whatever we are passing so we want to calculate the derivative of f of z and now f of z is a right so that's why i'm passing a as the input parameter so it's calculating the derivative of a which is the derivative of f of z and for the other layers i can just change capital l to small l and it will do the job pretty good pretty good uh just have to write a logic if activation equals relu then use relu otherwise use 10h See how simple it is. We are done with back propagation as, as well. And this is the hardest part of our model. Just return the gradients that we have made. Now we will use this gradients to update the parameters. Also, let's run our tester function to test if our implementation is correct. Everything seems good to me, which means that our implementation should be correct. Now the final part that's update parameters which is super simple just for all the layers i have to write w of l is equal to w of l minus of learning rate multiplied by del cos by del w and and this del cos by del w is the gradients that we have stored here all right so what parameters do does this function expect it expects parameters for sure and it expects gradients and it also expects learning rate all right i can just i just need to run a for loop for range one to l but i don't have l so l is equal to length of parameters by two parameter wl equals to parameter wl minus learning rate and gradient tw of that layer copy the same for b and that's it we are done but okay i forgot one thing we don't want to go till l we want to get, go till l plus one so the range starts from one till l plus one just returns the updated parameters and we are done good all right we have come till the very far end the last thing we have to implement is the our model function which should be uh, which should be pretty simple we just have to call these functions in the manner that we discussed right here all right initialize parameter then run a for loop for iteration number of times which means that how many times you want to uh, for how long do we want to train the model and then call these equations 
it at every iteration. What input does it ex expect? It expects everything x, y, it expects parameter, uh, it doesn't expect, it expects layer dims. Now layer dims are, remember what's the layer dims? Layer dims is the number of units in every layer. Then it expects learning rate, then it expects the activation function that you use. By default, I will specify ReLU. And it expects number of iterations. By default, let me keep it 100. Okay. Then I will initialize parameters by just calling that function initialize parameters. I hope I have spelled it correctly. Still, I'm going to let me just copy that. Yep. Then run a for loop in range zero to num meters, num iterations, and for every iteration, I'm gonna call forward propagation. Let me just copy paste things from here. And forward propagation returns what? It returns forward cache. Uh, it returns two things for cache and the A of the last layer, which are the predictions. So I will store them as A of L and forward cache. Uh, I will make activation equals just activation. Then cost equals compute cost E of L and Y. Then back propagation. Uh, let me keep this as default take a hello. And back propagation returns gradients. So catch them gradients equals this. AL ALS capital L past Y past parameters for cache activation good. Then update parameters, update parameters, returns parameters and it takes these three things. Good, we are done. We can just return the trained parameters from here. But to see the progress of the model, I'm going to print the cost for 10 number of times. So I will just say if I percentage of a num eaters iterations by 10 is equals to zero here this logic says that if uh, let's say if number of iterations is equal to 100 then this logic says that whenever i reaches the values like 10 20 30 40 at that time print cost and uh, let's say if the num iterations is 1000 then this logic says that whenever i reaches values like 100 200 300 at that time print cost i just say cost is print cost that's it we are done <clears throat> we have successfully implemented l layer neural network we can test our model finally and see if it's working successfully or not i will specify layer terms which should be the first we have input layer which is going to be x train of shape zero then i can specify let's say just to test it i will specify 20 10 and the final is going to be final layer is going to have number of neurons equal to y train dot shape of zero i will specify learning rate equals to uh, I, I tried some values and we can take this learning rate uh, as for this data set and number of iterations uh, just to test let's keep it thousand for now then call the model which returns parameters pass x train y train which is our data set then layer dims learning rate is equals to lr activation i will specify as a relu and num iterations equals iters uh, eaters great hopefully everything works out oops this should be num iteration not num iterations 
also uh, again sorry another mistake al why does it always get jinxed so whenever we say uh, hopefully everything works out it never works out update parameters i may have misspelled it yep so many errors grads grads not grad where 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 grads here yeah. oh yeah 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 Limitations here. Whew, let's see. Hopefully everything works out. Good. Cost seems decreasing. Yep, it is decreasing. It's pretty well. Everything is great. I can do something cool right here. And what we can do is that uh, do you, have you ever worked with TensorFlow model? So if you have worked with TensorFlow model, then you would notice that there is a small progress bar that which shows what's the progress for that epoch, and it also shows the accuracy and the, the training accuracy and the test accuracy right there and then. So we can do something like that of our own as well. Uh, again, I misspelled something. So that's what happens after two to three hours of shooting. So I start typing things that. Are incorrect but anyways so what I'm what I mean is that uh, you already know so what what we can do is that we can create a function called accuracy which will take X Y and parameters as the input and the it will calculate the accuracy so for example if we pass arguments X train and Y train here then it will calculate training accuracy if we pass X test and Y test then it will uh, calculate test data set accuracy right so to calculate the accuracy definitely we have to make predictions so how are we going to make predictions the uh, if the parameters are already trained then the predictions are this al right so all we have to do is cal is uh, call this forward propagation function uh, which will return al which are going to our pred predictions i will call this as preds and i will i don't require forward cache for predictions so i will just keep Keep this as underscore and again i have to write if else statements that if it's a binary classification if it's a binary classification then i have to implement a different logic else i have to different implement a different logic so if it's a binary classification you must know that uh if the value is greater than 0.5 then we classify it as uh, one if the value is less than 0.5 then we classify it as zero. So that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, this can be done with the help of this thing. So whenever I say preds greater than 0.5, it's gonna return me a true false, true false array. So I'll show you an example. Let's say I have uh, one, uh, uh, let's say I write some numbers like one, minus one, minus two. And I write greater than zero and make this as an umpire array. Then it will return true false true false values. Uh, this is why. Uh, oops, what comma? Then this will return true false true false value, and I'm just changing the data type of that equals to float. So now true will become 1.0, false will become 0, 0.0, and that's what it's happening here. I will show you with an example. All right. So this is this is how we can make the actual predictions right uh, for binary classification uh, while we for while if we have multi class classification then we have to use argmax so so argmax returns an index in an array where the there is a maximum value so for example i will show you an example here let's have 1 2 3 10 2 3 4 5 6 and then if i call this argmax then it returns the index where there is where there lies a maximum value which is at the index three here if i make it one then the maximum value lies let's say here then it will return that index five all right as it's as our preds is going to be a matrix so i will just uh, also specify x is equal zero also for binary classification it is also possible that y here is in the form of one hot encoding so i will also convert y into number which into a category number Thus, let's say, so this way, the one hot encoded vector will be converted into number and that number will be that category, that actual category. This should be good. All I have to check is how many times is Y 
equal equal spread so for that i can just write np dot sum uh, because this y equal equal spread is again going to return a true false true false value if the value of uh, that y is equal to that prediction i'm using a summation here so it will sum all the true values so it will return the number of times we have y equals to predictions out of all the m number of observations all right and as you want to calculate accuracy i will divide this with m so that will return a accuracy in the form of percentage i can also round this function i don't want to return a too long value so if you are not sure what a round does then np dot round just basically rounds it to two decimal points if i specify two it will round it to two decimal points if i specify three it will round it to three decimal points so this should return the accuracy i will call the accuracy of our model whenever i'm printing cost i can write that it uh, is this cost is is this and uh, train acc is this and test accuracy is this and just pass the values let's test this oh i forgot to specify the activation so activation also i have to pass activation here i will pass the same here as well hopefully everything's correct i misspell this spreads and yeah also i have we have not defined the m m will be y dot shape one good the training accuracy we can see the training accuracy in the test accuracy at every iteration and we would know when to stop if we have reached good amount of training and test accuracy then we can stop at that iteration so after running this for 1000 iterations train accuracy is 100% test accuracy is 76% we can also do something cool here uh, have you ever worked with tensorflow if you have then you would have noticed that whenever we train a model with tensorflow it shows a small progress bar here which shows the progress for that epoch we can do the same thing here as well uh, what we can do is we can write a small logic that will uh, print that progress bar for us so i can write if i percentage num iterations by 10 so num iterations by 10 is one slot that we have right and what do i mean by slot i mean by slot that is this this so this is what we have like this slot we have is num iterations by 10 right so at every slot i want to print uh, at every slot i want to print something 10 times and what do i want to print i want i can print equal equals just to show a progress bar and i will write end equals none uh the the print statement uh always prints with uh, the next line right so if i print hello one word hover it will be printed in the next line but if i specify end equals something like nothing then it will there won't be any uh next line in there so i will specify end equals nothing which means that it won't go to next line and that will print a uh, progress bar for us let's see sorry i forgot to wrap this inside so that will print a progress bar for us let's make this even better i will write next line see how we have a progress bar uh, these are there are less number of bar progress bars so i will divide it by 20 and it it will show more number of progress bars and now we have more number of progress bars it looks pretty cool it shows the progress that it's training and it's also showing us the test and the training accuracy at every every time so we have successfully made a deep neural network where we can change the number of hidden layers so i can make this now let's say 48 24 Eight, four so i can change the number of hidden layers and then train it again and and we did this completely from scratch without using tensorflow or any built-in library just python and numpy and we also have a small little progress bar of our own which shows the progress of the train model also we also we can change the relu function to 10h function and we can train the model in that I'm retraining it with 10h it works fine and we can also train it for binary classification or multi-class classification and the only change that we require if you want to train it for a different different kind of data set is that just 
load that data set no configurations are even required sounds pretty good doesn't it so if you want to see an example of a training a multi-class classification model then uh, i have a code right here which loads the mnist data set which is a handwritten digit recognition data set which means it to recognize the handwritten digits 0 1 2 3 4 and uh, we can just test our model on this data set as well uh, see there are 10 categories in this data set and i have loaded this data set all i have to do is just pass that data set here and see it's it's training it well i hope this was a valuable video for you as we saw the internal details behind the tensorflow models we made that model from scratch we wrote a a multi-layered neural network from scratch where we can change the number of uh, where we can do all sorts of configurations that we can do in a tensorflow model as well and i bet you if this is one of the simplest code that uh, you can find uh, I, I put a lot of effort to write this code. I put a lot of effort to uh, shoot this video. I put a lot of effort to test the code that I've written. So if you found the value from this video, then please, please, please do hit the red subscribe button. Also hit the like button. Share this video among your friends. Let me know down in the comment section. What do you think about this video? I want to know. I want to hear from you. What do you think about this channel and what kind of videos do you want me to make? All right. I hope this was a good learning for you. I hope you I learned a lot and I will see you in another video just like this uh, where we will be learning the internal details behind machine learning models and implement them in Python. So that's it for this video. I will see you in the next one.